Yo guys, um, Vicky Melody here once again. So quick one from the last video we made and the comment says um, from Bruce on the beat. He said, nice tutorial, very helpful. I love the kick. How can I get it? Then I like to respond to you guys. You guys already know. So I said, I can't remember, probably sampled from another hit song. And he said, one day make a video on how to steal sound from songs. And that one day, is today so welcome guys welcome to another tutorial i'm going to show you how i take out samples percussions snare kicks from a song i already like but mostly from our hit song from our big guys i just take out their stuff there are many ways to do it but i'll just show you my own way of getting it done so without wasting much of the time let's get it done don't forget to like comment subscribe comment kind of videos you want to see and we'll get it done you know let's grow the channel to something meaningful all right, the song actually took percussions from is um from Magix. The uh, I'm using it for this um, tutorial sake. I'm not going to play much of the song because of copyright issue, but you guys already know this. Money on my mind, yeah, that sound. I just I just hope that this little snippet I, I play doesn't affect the channel based on copyright. But then let me play um the beat I made out of it, something similar to what um, Magix um, had on that song, so I'll just play. First thing you have to do is to actually get um, the song you want to sample into your playlist. You get me? So uh, these are the samples. But I'm going to show you how I started. This is the song here. So but I'm not going to play it because of obvious reasons, copyright. Yeah. So what I, I did first is to extract, um, separate the stems. You guys already know. Yeah, you can separate the drums, the vocal, um, the instrument. So in FS Studio, you could quickly just do, um, click on this part and do um, extra stems from sample. If you're using the older versions of FS Studio, you might not be able to get this, but there are also some um, apps where you can do this. Yeah, so this shouldn't be an issue. When you do that, you can either select to, do only, to get only the drums or you want both the drum, bass, um, vocals and everything. So Depends on what, once you just hit extract, it gives you some time and it will extract that for you. So after doing that, I had, I had the drums. You get me? So with, with that on the way, there are many ways. Some people might actually do, um, use the Razor tool to you know slice out the samples that they want but then i prefer using edison i think edison is um is a plugin that is being slept on by a lot of you guys well it's a very powerful um plugin so what i do is um first let me delete everything on the edison is i solo the track i want to sample you get me then I press my, my, how to load up your Edison is just, um, it's very simple. You just easily press, um, control E on your, on any of the track, but I like having it on my mouse. I want to press control E, it brings up your Edison, or you could just simply go through here and look for 
Edison somewhere there. You get me? Yeah, look at Edison, just add it. But I do a lot of shortcuts, if you guys notice, because sometimes I, can, I cannot even remember what the how to get those things done, but I just do shortcut PP and it makes your workflow faster. So what I do is I press the record, then I play my track. And I'm okay with that. So I have this sample recorded in my um, Edison. So I'll now start selecting my samples one by one. So one thing you have to do before you start chopping your samples is to right click and go to snap and snap to zero crossing. So you don't chop, you chop your samples on point at the exact um, zero sample at. So you don't just chop out where, um, unevenly yes i don't know how to explain it to you but just select the zero zero cross and so you when you zoom in you can you cannot just come in between here and anywhere in between these lines and just chop it it snaps it on the zero on the exact zero line okay so i will look for the first thing i want to sample okay probably a snare this guy so I would zoom in there to fine tune it. It's actually snapping on, on the zero. It's not snapping on, on top of any amplitude here on the waveform. So snapping exactly on zero, I think here. And I also make sure I have enough tail. And something I like to do in editing, you can do a lot, you can process um, your sample here before anything but the only thing i like doing is just to normalize to make it sound loud already so when i drag it into my sampler it's cool so i'll just do my equalizer there so what i'll do is to bring up my my rack and just hold drag and add it to the sampler so you have then i could just rename it short shortcut is just press the middle part of your mouse here yeah? if you are using mouse just press it I could just name it rim shots i can use f2 to change the color yeah but you could just right click i can never remember change it okay name and color you get work faster with shortcut or you could another shortcut is just when you hold the shift and click you can rename it so it makes your everything fast. You get me? So when I'm done, I can still come back to my my Edison and look for another sample again. Okay, the kick. I bet you already understand um, the whole process. So we'll, this video won't get long extremely. So see, so snapping on exactly the zero line on the zero crossing. Yes, so I have my key. And if you listen correctly, you still hear some high frequencies. That's where your equalizer comes in in your and your mixer channel. So again, I would just I could actually equalize it from here if I want, but I prefer using the far filter EQ or, or the fluty parametric EQ from FL to do that. So again, the only thing I do here is just normalize. So it banks already. So I'll just drag it into there just name it keep i like naming coloring and everything it helps your project stay organized so when you come back later to mix your project you could just go straight and see what you are doing straight away sort of guessing what is this sound what is that sound so organization i tell my i have students that I handle, I always tell them that organization is your first step to being a good producer because once everything is organized, you save your files in the right places. You say, just arrange your life. You get me? So it helps you stay in order. You have to save your samples after chopping it. You get, so you also have your own percussion, your packs, your own sample pack, because that's the way I do. When I see sounds that I like, I save them up. You get, so that's just a wise thing to do. So when you have your the sample that you like, yeah, I like this. I'll just 
sample save as get i'll just go to my sample pack where i have my own packs and just save it up there so anytime i want to create another bit or and i like that that percussion i can just use it you feel me that's done so look at my um channel rack on where i had those those samples my kick you get then this is what it sounds like And what did I do here? Okay, there's this. Um, I don't know if you guys use this, but you see uh, on this note here, this hi hat. I didn't. I didn't chop it. So what? You, what I just did. If you have the uh, FL21 updates, you could just change it from velocity to repeat notes. You get me? So this is. You see that it's slicing up the without slicing. If I take it off, yeah, that's how you make those instead of using the razor tool to just cut off your and it works according to the snap you have um, going on there. Yeah, that's just that's just it. So if you want to see other kind of tutorials, just let me know. If you want me to show more of vocal mixing, just write it down on the comment and don't forget to follow us. You can also follow me on Instagram. You guys, please. Follow me on Instagram and at Vic Melody, Facebook at Vic, everywhere is at Vic Melody. So let's just get interactive. I see most of your chats on Facebook and everything, you guys. So just drop most of the questions here. Yes, yeah, because I read the comments here easily and I'm motivated to do the videos instead of always coming into my inbox to yeah, I appreciate that one too, but then most of anything you want to make as a request, just put it on the comment section in the videos. It helps the video get more visibility and also helps me to want to shoot more content. We'll see you guys on the next one.